So for the US and a lot of the world, the biggest sale weekend of the year is coming up. I'm not a very good salesman. So what I'm gonna do is point out a couple of the ones that I think are actually kind of worth considering and then tell you why you might not want to just, and you can pick between those two things and figure out if it's a good fit for you or not. This is not our only video for today. We're putting out a roundup as well, probably the GPU roundup, but figured put out a quick, easy sales video. Links will be in the description below for all the products discussed, along with the article if you prefer a table layout of those links. And yeah, we'll pull a couple components from each category, put some timestamps uh, over there, and then you can jump to the category for which you need products. This coverage is brought to you by iFixit com and their ProTech Toolkit. iFixit is refreshing their ProTech Toolkit in time for the holidays. You can find a link in the description below to the ProTech Toolkit and other toolkits that iFixit sells. We find the ProTech and Essentials kits to be the most useful for DIY enthusiasts. Between now and November 27th, iFixit is offering free US domestic shipping for orders over $50 with code FIXTHEWORLD. So the plan here is to go over a couple components for each category. We have articles for each of these already. And uh, we're trying to avoid the sales, in air quotes, where the retailers basically jack up the price and then drop it. So we're trying to avoid those and look at things that are actually on sale. And there are some genuinely good ones. CPUs, surprisingly, have some of the best. So we'll start with Intel because we already covered AMD. Full disclosure here, my original plan was to just have a timestamp that jumps to the Intel CPU sales section, have it be a black screen and one second long. But the 7700K is actually on sale, which is something we've never really seen from Intel before. They don't generally put CPUs on sale, so thank you competition for that. It's now $290 for the whole year. It's been $330 to $350, and it's still a good CPU by all accounts. So. The 8700K is out, yes, but the 7700 is not obsolete. And at that price versus the 8700K, it's definitely not obsolete. It's still plenty good for gaming. It's not quite as good at production as the 8700K. So if you have needs for Blender, Premiere, things like that, consider the 8700K, but the 7700 is still great. And overclock it, because it's way better that way. Go to 4.8 to 5.0 for most of them. Well, 4.8 to 4.9 for most. 5.0 if you're lucky, get a decent motherboard with it and you'll be good to go. This one presently comes with Assassin's Creed Origins and Total War Warhammer 2, which are actually new and kind of relevant. So that's potentially value add for you. And other than that, for motherboards, we would recommend the Gigabyte Gaming 7 Z270 board for a higher end overclocking board. That's what we use for our GPU benchmark rig. And then for something more affordable, the ASRock Z270 Extreme 4 is way cheaper. It's fine if you're not doing anything serious and just put a fan on the heatsink. AMD Ryzen. So as already pointed out in our previous content, basically every AMD Ryzen and Threadripper CPU is on sale right now. That includes the 1950X, which is marked down from $1,000 to 800. That's actually a good sale. That's 20% off. Uh, so yeah, it's they got margins there, but it's better than what we normally see for CPUs. So that's actually kind of nice to see for once Intel and AMD actually on sale. 1920X is 650. Uh, these are not for everybody. You should look at our reviews before you go buy them because the prices are tempting, but if it's not gonna serve your needs, you definitely are not saving money by buying it. Instead, you might wanna look at R7s, R5s, I7s uh, for gaming or lighter workloads. Uh, for production, definitely the 1950X is a good deal right now. The R5 1600 got our overall best value award for the year. That's 190 bucks. That's worth it at that price for sure. And more or less replaces i5s until low end motherboards come out. And uh, yeah, best CPUs overall, R5 1600, R7 1900, 1950X is worth considering maybe. Uh, for motherboards, we can recommend the Threadripper CPUs going on Zenith Extreme, although it's expensive, or Gigabyte X399 Designari if you want something cheaper, uh, but it's BIOS, it leaves a lot to be desired. It's still 100 bucks cheaper though, so those are your, your pros and cons. Cases, cases have some actually good sales. This was more exciting than a lot of the other categories. Uh, cases have more margin, so it makes sense. They have, uh, several of these have won awards over the last year. The Fractal Meshify C is available between $70 and $80, which is a pretty good markdown 
It was 90 to 100 before. If you can catch it when it hits 70, and it, it, go, it has been going up and down the last two days. If you catch it at 70, that's a great deal. Uh, the fractal defined C is also around the same price, marked down similarly. If you get one of them, buy a fan with either one. It'll be a lot better. You can run lower RPMs on two fans in the front or something, and you'll be in better shape for it. So we like those. Defined C is a bit warm, uh, but it's great build quality, good ease of installation, and you can fix the warmth with the fans. The next one, the Corsair 270R, we haven't talked about since January. That's now around $55, marked down from the $70 launch price. This is a case that we liked decently at $70. It wasn't as competitive as it needed to be. At $55, it's one of the best cases in its price tier. It hands down beats a lot of the other $50 cases. Like, not just beats them, it, it like beats them into the earth. Because <laughs> uh, you're looking at things like the Gungnir which um, I'm getting PTSD from thinking about. So the 270R uh, is, is potentially worth considering. It's not the best case in the world, but at 55, not bad. And then the NZXE S340 is about $50 after rebate. If you count the rebates, if you don't, it's a bit more. And then the Rosewell Cullen, and this is one of the better ones. So we showed this as a decently cooled case because it has so many fans. It's now priced at 75% off of its original MSRP. They've really cut it down to 75 bucks. It's a Jones Bow box, uh, but one of the better ones, and it's actually a, a really good deal at this point. So that's worth considering. Next, SSDs. So we spotted the Crucial MX300 SSDs, allegedly marked down to $80 for the 275 gigabyte and marked down to 130 for the 525 gigabyte. Funny story, I bought both of these about a year ago, went back to my purchase history, looked up the price, and I paid those prices. So they're not actually on sale, but they say they are. Uh, so we're not gonna have links to those in the description below because it's bullshit. Uh, anyway, we <laughs> bought those previously. They're not really on sale. Uh, raise the price, drop it, typical story. What was a little on sale was the Samsung 850 Pro SATA SSD. So a bit marked down, uh, the one terabyte unit is presently $400 for a higher end SSD. For something more reasonably priced, we also saw the Samsung 850 Evo for two, uh, 250 gigabytes for $90 on Amazon. And we picked up two of those for test benches. It's decent boot drive. Motherboard's talked about those already. Uh, oh, B350 board, I mentioned that. So Buildzoid's video is entirely about overclocking motherboards for people who actually overclock meaning you don't just change the multiplier and call it an extreme overclock. Uh, for something cheaper, the ASRock Pro 4, which he gave an honorable mention to, I think, is not bad. It has the least terrible VRM heatsink of the B350 boards. And that one is $75, uh, 55 if you count rebates. So that's that's good board for B350. Just if you're actually doing any meaningful amount of overclocking, be careful of capacitor temperatures because at 105C you're looking at two years of life, 5,000 hours. So um, just get a fan on it or put a rear exhaust fan in the case or put an air cooler on the car on the CPU and an exhaust fan, you'll be good to go with that. Uh, it's a good price otherwise though. Power supplies, we saw the EVGA Supernova 650 G2 for $70 after rebate or 85 normally. It's one of the better mid-range power supplies in that price category right now. If you want something dirt cheap that's kind of mediocre but will get the job done for a budget build, the Corsair CX650 non-modular power supply is 50 right now, marked down to 40 after a rebate if you count them. It's definitely not a favorite in the space. Uh, it's nothing to, to really be super proud of, but it's fine for something basic and cheap if you're not gonna put a ton of load on it. So if you really need something, that's uh, the new egg seems to really be trying to sell those right now. Monitors, one of the better deals we saw was new egg exclusive, unfortunately. It's the LG 27UD58P-B. Nailed it. 27 inch display. Uh, that's an IPS panel with native 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. Uh, FreeSync is on there, five millisecond gray to gray. And this isn't the fastest response in the world. It's not the best picture quality in the world, but it's decent. And at $300, it's hard to complain too much. It's an actual sale. It's not one of the fake ones like that SSD. So this is a pretty good price and value overall. Uh, if you're trying to get into 4K cheap 
and resolution matters more to you than outright picture quality, then this is a decent option to consider for entry level. 4K gaming, by the way, should start getting more prevalent in the next year, I think, but I will have GPU recommendations in a minute. Next monitor, MSI has the Optics G27C2 27-inch display curved, and that's got a one millisecond gray to gray, free sync, 144 hertz refresh, unfortunately only 1080p, but it's $240 after an instant promo, $10 MIR rebate if you count those. Amazon has it for $250. Uh, and for an absolute dirt cheap monitor, we saw a 1080p display that was 23 inches, five millisecond gray to gray, for $90 after an instant promo code. Uh, and it's got a $10 rebate if you count those to bring it down to 80. So not bad, still 80 to $90 for a 1080p display that's not absolutely hated is worth considering if, again, you're on an ultra strict budget or you're just getting into PC gaming or something. And if you're just getting into PC gaming, I'm sorry that you chose this year with memory prices and video card prices, which are next. RX 580s, so uh, this one's pretty sad, but hear me out. The RX 580s are now down to MSRP, so 240 to 260-ish dollars for an eight gigabyte model, 200 to 230 for a four gigabyte model. Typically you'd scoff at that and say it's MSRP, but considering the last six months of RX 580 prices, it's a lot lower than it was. It's like half of what it was four months ago. So if you're trying to buy one and MSRP is okay with you, they're kind of available at this price. The better 580s are still $280, like the Gaming X or the Nitro. The Power Color and the MSI Armor are available in $240 to $260 ranges. The main trouble with this is that the VRMs will run a little warm comparatively. The fans will be a little bit louder, but if you just care about price and you have adequate airflow in the case, uh, you'll basically be fine. Just don't hotbox the cards. Uh, definitely consider picking up a thermal pad in addition for a quick mod in case there's coil wine on either of them. You can throw the pad on top of the inductors and there's a decent chance it'll kill the coil wine. Not always though, it depends on the components. Next one, 1070s and 1080Ti's. There's technically a GTX 1080Ti SC2 Gaming for $10 off. So it's 740 instead of 750. Um, if you miss that sale, you're not really missing out on much, I guess, if you're already spending that much money, but $10 off. So uh, something to consider. There's a 1070 mini card that was kind of interesting. Good for an HTPC build. It's an MSI card. Uh, it's short and that's $410. So that one's not bad. RAM is the last. So we found some RAM sales. No, that's, it's not a joke. We, like we, we found, okay, it's, it's kind of, actually it's kind of depressing at this point, but uh, we did find some sales on RAM that was marked down from the price that it's been for the last eight months. So I think we have a chart of RAM prices. If, can, can we uh, get that on the screen? And um, yeah, it's, uh, well, anyway, it's better than it was, I guess. So we saw the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigabyte kit, 3000 megahertz CL15, currently available around $160 on Amazon. Uh, Rip Jaws 5 kit, two by eight gigabytes, 2800 megahertz, $140, 20 bucks for 200 megahertz difference. You're not gonna miss it. Uh, so it's worth saving the money. The Rip Jaws 5, two by 16 gigabyte kit for 32 gigabytes total runs at uh, 3,200 megahertz CL16 and $300, which sadly is one of the best prices we've seen on a memory kit in a long time comparatively. So if you need a big memory bank for that Threadripper CPU, for example, consider the Ripjaws 5 kit, uh, 32 gigs, 3,200 megahertz, pretty much what you want for Ryzen 3000 to 3,200 and 300 bucks. So it's a lot cheaper than like uh, some of the G-Skill RGB stuff. So that's it, quick video. Uh, we have another video that's in the more normal format coming out today as well. This is just meant to hopefully help guide some of the interest and in sales going on right now because there are some legitimately good ones, especially on the CPU front. Uh, also a lot of stupid ones. As always, we would advise you to not panic and buy stuff because you're trying to get it before the sale ends. Research it, read the articles. If we've written them or other people watch the videos and uh, the biggest thing is a lot of these sales are like they, the prices are not really and never were what the list price says. 
they just say it was the list price, but in reality, it's probably been like the same price as the sale for the last five months. Um, so consider that as well. You can check on, I think PC Part Picker has price trends if you want to make sure that it's not all uh, a lie to try and get you to buy it quickly. But hopefully, I think most of these were actual sales. I did try to look into them. So that's all for this one. Subscribe for more. We'll have roundup guides you'll definitely want to see if you're building a PC. You can go to gamersnexus.net to catch all the articles that won't make it to the web to the YouTube channel. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We're going to put a sale on our own stuff as well. Uh, so some of the shirts I'll probably mark down like five bucks or something. So uh, store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of those. We'll mark down the stickers too. So you can grab some of that stuff for a bit cheaper. But uh, yeah, that's all for this time. I'll see you all next time.